more that I can do, but just fall more in love with you and ask the angel armies to stand by. When I leave the room, I'm going to fail you. I already have. 10,000 times, I will fall down flat. You'll have a seat in the front row of everything I don't know. And all I'm trying to be, you'll see. Good night. There will be storms that we come through. In time, we will slay dragons, me and you. I'll always want to hold you tight, keep you safe with all my might. So I will leave Jesus next to you when I leave the room. And you will run ahead as if you knew the way. And I will pray more than one should have to pray. There will be words we can't take back. Silences, too. And I'll be on my knees. You'll see. One night, when I am old and unsteady, you'll want me to fight. But I'll tell you, I'm ready. When there's nothing left to do, I will still be loving you. Then you'll fold your fingers into mine. And I will let Jesus hold you tight when I leave the room. Our parents are such a blessing to us. And we may not always appreciate that. We may not know what they have done for us. If we are blessed to have known our parents. Not everyone is blessed to know their parents. While Mother's Day is not an official Christian holiday. In fact, I don't know if there are any official Christian holidays except the Lord's Day when we celebrate the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. It is fitting that we honor our parents. It's in the Ten Commandments. <laughs> it is foundational to a life of obedience to God. Among with thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not commit adultery and other commandments is the commandment. Honor Sorry. your father and mother that it may go well, well with you and that you may live long in the land. Honor. It's a good word. Honor. To show high regard or respect. You look it up in the dictionary and it will say something like verb tense. To respect greatly. To show high regard for. 
to do or give something in honor of. So how exactly do we show honor to our <coughs> mothers in particular? We'll get to fathers in a few weeks. How, mm -hmm. how, how's that? How's that? Dan Allender, in one of his books called Bold Love, <clears throat> says the following. <clears throat> we all long for union and connection, a, a taste of being drawn to another and intertwined in his soul. So that we are known and fully received in spite of the deformities of sin. We also long to enter the other and the world with the kind of presence and power that sees beauty and goodness grow as a result of our existence. Well, that's pretty deep. Well, it, it kind of represents what Jesus talks about in the high priestly prayer in John. Well, the whole section from John 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. John 13 through 17 is Jesus' prayer and also Jesus' instruction about what a life lived with God looks like. It's a life lived in love, a life lived in unity. A sense in which we are in God and God is in us. And I think there is a special bond that is formed between a child and its mother. Yes, there are bonds between child and father, but the maternal bond is special. And it can be deep. And child development experts talk about the process of bonding and attachment that a child has with its mother. But then, then comes a time when the child separates from its mother. No, no, no! <laughs> or the later years. All right, I can't speak on authority on this, but I, I just from observation, shall we say. But mothers teach us a lot about God. Yeah. Teach us a lot about the love of God and our need for God and our need for his guidance and our need for his presence. Yeah. Honoring our mothers is a way of Honoring God. There's some strong verses in the Bible on this. In the Ten Commandments, it says, Honor your father and your mother that your days may be long. There are a number of phrases that are repeated throughout the book of Deuteronomy and other parts of the Bible. Of course, the Ten Commandments can be found both in Deuteronomy as well as in the book of Exodus. But there are a number of parallel verses that talk about God's intention for his various commands. In Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 40, he says, Therefore you shall keep his statutes and his commandments, which I commanded you today, that it may go well with you. And with your children after you. And that you may prolong your days in the land that the Lord your God is giving you for a time. And then in Deuteronomy 5.33, you shall walk in all the ways that the Lord your God has commanded you that you may live. And that it may go well with you, and that you may live long in the land, and that you, or in the, long in the land that you shall 
possess. <coughs> there are some strong words about dishonoring one's parents. Dishonoring parents by striking them or cursing them was punishable by death. In Exodus and Leviticus and Deuteronomy, and even in the book of Proverbs, which says if one curses his father or his mother, his lamp will be put out in utter darkness. It was a serious offense to dishonor, to curse one's parent. A person who despised parental authority would not live long, the scripture says. There is a recognition that even as our Heavenly Father, as God is our Father, even as He is more authoritative than we are, He possesses more knowledge, more experience, more power than we. And we are called to submit ourselves to God. And as children, we are to submit ourselves to our parents and to their leadership. Some of the rabbinical writings talk about what is constituted in honoring one's parents. What constitutes honor? Listen to this practical way. One must provide them with food and drink and clothing. One should bring them home and take them out and provide them with all their needs cheerfully. I don't know if this is a rabbi, but the author of this is of the name Kitzer Shulchan from Aruch 143.7. That's not a biblical passage, but it is recognized among followers of God that honor of parents is central to our walk with God. According to a Jewish legend, listen to these words. Honor the body that bore thee, and the breasts that gave thee suck. Maintain thy parents, for thy parents took part in thy creation. For man owes his existence to God, to his father and to his mother, in that he receives from each of his parents this is where it gets a little interesting and up for pondering. He receives from each of his parents five of the parts of his body and ten from God. This is a legend. The bones, the veins, the nails, the brain, and the white of the eye come from the father. The mother gives the skin, the flesh, the blood, hair, and the pupil of the eye. God gives him the following. Breath, soul, light of countenance, sight, hearing, speech, touch, sense, insight, and understanding. But, if people do not honor their parents, God says, it is good that I do not dwell among men, or they would have treated me superciliously too. Now I had to review my vocabulary words, and so I looked at the word supercilious. I'm, I'm a big fan of the dictionary, if you haven't you haven't figured that out. I, I'm fascinated by words, but 
even more fascinating by what they mean. And so here's what I found out about supercilious. Supercilious means feeling or showing haughty disdain. See, synonyms at proud. This, the word origin, the cilium, is the lower eyelid. The supercilium is the eyebrow. So words that go along with this are pride. I don't know if that means like raised eyebrows or what. Pride or contempt. And so indeed, it is not good to show contempt toward anyone, but certainly not our parents. We ought not to treat them with contempt. We are instead to show, show honor to them and respect to them. It's possible we may have grown up in a family where parents were not always the best example they could have been. Or maybe they were a good example. But whether they were a good example or not so good of example, we are still to respect them and honor them as our parents and learn from them, either by learning what to do or what not to do. It's important that we do all of those things. A small group of us were blessed on Wednesday night to watch film that Brother Davies announced last week. It was called Blessedness Out of Brokenness. It was about how people's lives changed. People who were living in prison had changed lives when they, when they came to know Jesus. When they became Christians, when they sought to live their lives according to his teachings. And Many of them grew up certainly without fathers. And some of them met their fathers for the first time when their fathers were in prison. And now they are realizing that some of their sons met them for the first time when they were in prison. So growing up without the benefit of a parent, a faithful parent, is, is a big, it's a burden. It's a burden without that example, with, without that steadying force in our lives. But now that these men found the way of the cross, and learned what Jesus had done for, for them, and learned about the path that leads to life, it was their desire to change their lives and live in, in a such a way so that their children would have a better <clears throat> result, a better beginning to their lives, a better foundation upon which to build their lives. Some, if not many, of these at this prison, which was the Angola prison in in Louisiana, which was where the Louisiana death row is situated. Uh, many, if not most of them, were there for life sentences. I, I think they said 95% of those at that prison were in life sentences. And uh, there for first or second degree murder, aggravated rape, assault, you, uh, some one of the gentlemen who was interviewed said he had been arrested 95 times before he was brought to the Angola prison. So a, a life, he, he was living a life of crime. But then his life changed in the Lord. So you never quite know when somebody's life might turn around. If you had the blessing of a parent who served as a good example to you, praise God for that. I think one of the points I'm trying to make with this comment is that um, even the worst of parents uh, can have a change of heart. 
We are to honor one another, uh, regardless of how well we are to, how well we are following the Lord, praying for one another that we might indeed walk in a manner that is worthy of the Lord. Getting down really, 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 really practical here. How about three, maybe even four practical ways to show honor to our mothers? Now I realize that for a good majority of us in this auditorium today, our mothers may have already passed on. But that's that's okay. I, I trust that these principles can be can be can be applicable by by the rest of us as well. But uh, I have three yay four ideas that, and at least one of these I hope will resonate with you. The first one, and now this is especially for those who are still uh, living at home and are under the authority of your parents. <laughs> that would be of the younger of us. <laughs> okay? I, I'm looking at a few, of, there are a few in that category tonight. So, what would be my advice, not my advice, but what would the scriptures say about how you can honor your parents? Well, I would just say, Obey your mom. <laughs> Do what she says. Well, that's what it says. It says, children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. And then it says, honor your father and mother. This is the first commandment with a promise, that it may go well with you, and that you may live long in the land. Now, of course, it, it then talks about what parents ought to do. Uh, it's important for parents not to exasperate their children. That's important. But it does say, children, obey your parents in the Lord. And that's a blessing. That's a blessing. Because what is it they say? They say, you can do this either the hard way or the easy way. We often think that the easy way is the hard way, and the hard way is the easy way. So, typically, obeying our parents is actually the easy way. Mm -hmm. They usually have reason behind their commands. Yeah. All right, so that's for those of you who are still living in your mother's house. All right, what about for those who may not be in the same household or the same under the same roof as your mother. So if for those under the roof should obey their mother, those of you who are still your mother's son or daughter but may not be <coughs> with her, here's what I would say you can do to honor your mother. Call your mother. <laughs> Call her up. Let her know what's going on with you. I understand that some of us, or some may may not, may not be on speaking terms with our mother yeah. if they if they are still alive. But insofar as it is possible, be at peace mm -hmm. with her. And insofar as it de it depends on you, if you have done something to put strain in that relationship, then it is it is incumbent. On you to make it right as in so far as possible. Now, I know we can always do a better job keeping in, in touch with our parents, but it is a blessing to be able to do, to do so. And if any peacemaking needs to happen to be at peace, then I pray that God may see that happen for you. Okay. Then the third piece of of advice is for those who not only may not be living under the house of 
under the roof, sorry, under the roof with your mother, but maybe your mother is getting older. And this is where I would say the way you can honor your mother is to provide for your mother insofar as you are able to do so. And I think the words of scripture and the words of the, the various teachers over the years has said, provide for her what she needs. And that is a very honoring way of honoring your parents. The final way that we can honor our parents that I will mention today, and, and this, this might be this might be applicable to people in any category, is this last one is two parts. Sorry to make categories, okay. Forgive your mother if you need to forgive her, if she was not a perfect mother. Now, I understood my mother was perfect. <laughs> and maybe yours was as well. But if it's possible something still needs to be forgiven, then let it go. Forgive your mother. She, she was not perfect. And then closely along with that, along with that forgiveness, I would say cherish your mother. Amen. Value her. Cherish her because she is the means by which you came into this world. You have life because of her. So may we honor our mothers on this day. For so, by so doing, we are honoring God. Our mothers were not perfect or are not perfect, and we are not perfect either. We are not perfect children. We need to be forgiven. But even as our mothers cherish us, so we can cherish our mothers. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you that you have shown love to us through our parents, and especially through our mothers. We pray, O oh God, that we can either honor our living parents while we still have the opportunity to do so, or we can honor the memory of our mothers. Mm -hmm. Thank you for them. Help us to live honorably yeah. and to live showing honor mm -hmm. to those to whom honor is due. Hear our prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Even as a mother loves us deeply, so God loves us with a deep love. Mm -hmm. And he desires for us to walk with him, and to love him and serve him with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. Uh, if there's any way that we can assist you in that, uh, that go, goes beyond uh, what you have already expressed in your prayer uh, requests, whatever that might be, please make it known as we stand and sing the song of invitation. Perhaps even more importantly, if you have not become a Christian, now is the time to be buried with Christ in baptism, to rise and walk in newness of life. Whatever your need may be, please make it known as we stand and sing the song of invitation. I heard an old, old story, how a Savior came from glory, how he gave his love.